randomies, and this is your boy Gizmo GX, and welcome to another series on the channel. And I know this might sound a little bit weird saying new series because it's like, yo, Gizmo, you just had an IBA VGC uploaded onto the channel like for what four months ago, three months ago, I think. I don't remember the the date, but it's been a while since I actually uploaded a video on the channel. And this series that I come up with, that I came up with. Uh, it's called the four part of voiceover series short for for PV series, you know Actually, I'm supposed to say it the other way around, but you get the deal uh, I'm gonna be calling it the four PV series from here on out and the purpose of this series is to basically go over past battles that I've yet to upload in the channel and it's gonna range from the last two matches I had left on the old RCF and I called it old RCF because I'm literally reading my script on the screen should have just not read it <laughs> word by word but the purpose of this video is to really just go over past battles that i've yet to upload onto the channel and let's go ahead and start off with the rcf at least for the first section of the four-parter series and yes as the title uh, as the series suggests this is going to consist of four different sections and the first episode should be going off on a tuesday i intentionally had this to go on a monday but you know technical difficulties really just happened on my side at the end i was trying to get the best position for mic audio so that way it could be soothing to your ears so let me know how my voice sounds in the comment section below i'm trying my best to go ahead and keep it consistent keep it clean and hopefully i do that in this four party series so uh, anyways, going on to the series and the point of this series and uh, we're going to go ahead and start off with the RCF old content and wow, that's a lot of ants, but anyways, uh, so yeah, so the first match that you guys are seeing on the screen is actually week eight of the RCF. You guys are confused with what the RCF is, which I should have mentioned earlier in the video. Definitely go ahead and check out this video over here because this video is going to tell you everything you need to know about the RCF. Just in short, it's a league that Slightly Salty came up with. And the purpose of it is have a randomized team and let's go and see what we can do on the field. I mean, do against all the coaches that participate in the RCF. Yo, actually, you know, doing voiceovers is not as easy as it seems, especially for me who just has a tendency to forget a lot of information. So my apologies if I leave anything out in this video. If I did, let me know in the comments because, you know, voiceover, I have been doing, I've done it in the past, but I haven't done any type of voiceovers in a long while. So this is a really great time to just go deep and dive in into this a new environment you could say but anyways going on to the match uh, I, I mentioned earlier we we're going up against monk Verno, aka the coach of the Houston Haxorus and let me just tell you this battle as you're seeing on the screen and listening to me this battle was very it was tough because monk has a very top powerful team consisting of two three actual legendaries and some walls such as Reporion who's barely I think it's strong on the special defense side Correct me if I'm wrong. I know my information is all over the place, but here I'm going to try my very best to recall all types of information. And anyways, like I said, uh, our opponent's team is very tough, but compared to our side of the team, I had a good shot at winning this, but there was a lot of misplays that I did, such as this Celebi that just died. I don't have a solid reason as to why I brought it onto the team, but... I just brought it, I guess it was against the ground, um, but as you can see, it failed. So, uh, actually, since we're already here in this section of the video, we're, I'm just going to go on to talk about this was the worst decision ever I did throughout this battle. And the reason why it's the worst thing I ever did was because I, at the point in time, I still remember it. I, it's, it's hilarious how I still remember this. I thought Groudon was slower than Derilodon. <laughs> but guess what? Even, it's... My miscalculation was that, and I knew that Groudon had the rock polish, but what I didn't take into consideration is that my Derulodon was one base speed slower than Groudon, so even with Choice Guy, it didn't matter much, so that cost me the game pretty much because I had nothing to take care of this Vaporeon at all. Nothing. I had nothing all. All strats were lost, all hope was lost, especially the fact that I just got burned by the Porion with gold, especially on a Jirachi who was dedicated to physical uh, investments on pure physical. So 
Everything I had left was just like, I got nothing for the Vaporeon. I'm stuck. I lost Duralodon the most stupidest way possible. And this cost me pretty much the match. Now, from here on out, my thought process was, I gotta go and probably go for a sweep and hope for the Parahax and hope for the best. Now, that alone is just a big tough job in its own. And my last ditch in efforts was on Linkerock. Because it's pretty much one of the main reasons why I brought Linky Rock. Linky Rock was just there to go for the late game sweep. Along with the reasoning behind Cinderace. So I thought I'd just point that out. And here I'm just hoping for the, the best that it gets Parahax. But as you can see, life isn't fair. <laughs> I, get par I, I didn't get any hacks. I didn't get anything. I just screwed up big time. And that cost me the game. And at this point, I think... I decided to go for the forfeit because I thought it was pointless to keep on going because I knew the results. So I took the L, unfortunately. But anyways, that was Monk's battle. So let me see if there's anything else I want to point out. Let's see, um, no, there's not really much anything else I want to point out in terms of this battle. But something I do want to point out is that in every single league and every team I bring onto a match, I have the theme of anime. And the theme for that week was actually, is it okay to pick up a girl in a dungeon? I think it is. Uh, if I do get it wrong, I'm probably going to put like an image right here to verify the actual true title to what I was referring to. But anyways, now let's go into the next match that you're seeing on the match. Or I mean on the match, on the screen. And that is our first match to playoffs. So just give you a little background information on how I made it to playoffs. Because I did lose my week 8 match. As you saw earlier. Now that match in, sp in particular didn't really matter. Because I got enough wins. That I could have lost basically week 8. And still make it or have a placement in uh, the playoffs. Now the only thing it affected was my position in playoffs. And uh, I mean for me... I don't think the position in playoffs really does matter. Some people do do take it seriously. As for me, as long as I have a spot, I feel like that's good enough. I know, I mean, I, I feel like that's my perspective on playoffs. Don't really care too much about it. As long as I make it uh, have a position in it. And then right there is show your real good A game, you know. But anyways, so we did make it to playoffs. And now we're here going up against S3 Tornado, who actually just recently... I was digging through some old information and found out that SB Tornado went through a rebrand. And I want to respect rebrands as I've had it two different occasions. So SB Tornado is now known as Sophie Sakawai. And I want to respect it. So I think for the future from here on out, I think I'm going to go with Sophie. If I ever refer to SB Tornado, I'm going to go with Sophie. And Sophie was actually the coach of the Vancouver Corvic Knights. And in this match, it was... How would you say it? The pacing on this match was very slow at the beginning. As you can see, I'm slowly picking my moves. And the reason for that is that we were recreating this match. Because originally we had this done on the Wi-Fi. You know, on like Pokemon, the actual game, Sword and Shield. But like, we literally dragged that match for 30 minutes. No joke. We dragged it. We dragged the timer. We dragged the timer. I think it was like 30 minutes. So we dragged those 30 minutes. And guess what? There was not much we could have done. It, we didn't lose any mons. We ne nor, neither lost. All we did was pretty much stall it out. Had six mons both sides. So that's pretty much what I really wanted to point out on the squad. And let's see. Any noticeable things that I really want to point out on this match? Because I don't want to go over the reason why I brought these mons. Because I wouldn't remember everything. <laughs> I'm going to be honest with you. So I tried to do this in, an, in a separate recording and I failed because I was just going too much into the details of why I brought these mods when I originally don't remember. But I thought I'd just still cover some important sections of the matches such as let's go with Gudra. So I think I still have not gotten to that section in the video. Uh, yeah, I still haven't gotten there so I don't want to cover that just yet. But something that I do want to cover is Jirachi since that was already it's already dead. So Jirachi's purpose in this matchup was to take care of the Yveltal. But guess what? Jirachi is dead and Yveltal is still living. And that is going to play a really big factor later on in this match you're about to see. But anyways, since Gudra is on the screen... Gudra's main job was to take care of the Rebombi. I was really afraid. I, can, I remember that. 
that I was really afraid of the Rebombi and it took care of its job and for me it didn't matter if it died here. So when it went down I was like well there's not much I really can do it did its job so cool if I could keep it alive cool if not then that's cool too. So now going into another mon such as Durinodon and Durinodon's main purpose is to kill this Eternatus. Now if you haven't been keeping up with the old, uh, old RCF, if you've been keeping up with the RCF league there was like this battle was going up against Salty and well Durinodon just destroys Eternatus. As long as it's not invested in some defense on the special side, it cannot take a Draco Meteor at max damage unless one it outspeeds. Oh, actually, fun fact even if it does outspeed, I could still take. I have enough special defense to tank a hit. So I love that. I'm very proud of it. But, anyways. So that's another interesting fact for this match. Uh, another thing I do want to point out that was very important is the Tangela. And Tangela's job was there to wall, literally, wall the right period. Now, it did, I mean, not wall the right period, wall the G Max really boom, which it did early on in the match. Now, again, since we're here at the end screen, I know there's, there's so much information that I really wanted to cover and I, I omit it a lot and the reasoning that I'm not going over everything because I again I don't remember everything play by play as to what was happening in this match so I just want to keep it really short and simple and one thing and on, a, on the ending note I just want to say the team that this was actually built on <laughs> the theme for this week was no game no life which is definitely this is the title i never forget so it was one of my most favorite animes in this current point in time of this league i was literally going like into every match with the protagonist mindset i was like okay if i do this and if i do that uh, <laughs> it played it did a good you know that mindset took me to playoffs and well i lost the first match as you can see so I thought I'd point that out, but anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this kind of voiceover. Let me know what you think of the series in the comment section below. Hopefully, this video definitely goes up on a Tuesday, fingers crossed. And then the second part of this series is going to be going up on a Wednesday, if not Thursday. And then the third part will be going on a Friday, fingers crossed. So my ideal goal is to get this video going up on a Tuesday. The following episode on a Wednesday and then the third parter on a Friday and the last section of this four, uh, the 4 PV series goes on a Sunday. I mean Friday. <laughs> I'll go into more detail as to why as the next session is going to be covering the first half of the IBA VGC. But anyways, this has been your host Gizmo GX. Let me know again what you think about the series. Do you think it's cool? And I'll see you in the next one, randomies. Peace.